When a group of a-holes are invited to an island for a mystery weekend, things take a turn in the wrong direction. That's the premise of Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. The question I'm here to answer today is if it's worth your time to watch a Glass Onion. Let's begin. Before I dive in, I have a mystery for you to solve. And that is, who recently subscribed to the channel Adam Does Movies? The answer may shock you. Give up? It was you. You probably didn't even know it. You just instinctively hit the subscribe as soon as the video started and, and that was that. Just to be safe though, you should check and make sure that the subscription did go through. If it didn't, go ahead and hit the button again um, because we want to make sure that you're here. I post movie content every single week. You would be foolish to pass this content up. It's free. Let's continue. Glass Onion isn't really a sequel to Knives Out. Sure, Detective Blanc is back, but Ryan Johnson doesn't want you to look at this as a direct sequel. In fact, he's actually mad a Knives Out was even put on the title at all. I guess that's out of his control, which is bizarre since he wrote and directed this film. Instead, he wants you to treat these like novels, murder mysteries you can pick up without having to have knowledge of previous entries. And his thought process is sound here. You do not need to see a Knives Out to watch Glass Onion. That said, if you haven't seen it, you should. It's a great film. And the same can be said for Glass Onion. Let's start with the pros. A big one for me, the fantastic cast of characters. If you're familiar with Knives Out, the same thing applied there. They're characters inspired by real people. Whether it's Edward Norton as an Elon Musk type billionaire who lives on a remote island and can pretty much do whatever the hell he wants. Or Dave Bautista as Duke Cody, a Joe Rogan type who has a YouTube channel where he's pushing protein and men being men. We have Kate Hudson here as Birdie J, a washed up actress who still looks great, but she's well past her prime, which is great casting to have Kate Hudson here because I don't remember the last thing I saw her in. Katherine Hahn is always a treasure. Here's no different. She's playing a political figure. Kind of reminds me of her character from Parks and Rec, which is always a good thing. Then you have Janelle playing Andy Brand, a mysterious individual who's on the island and no one actually knows why. Let's get the superficial stuff out of the way. It looks great, it sounds great, it's acted great. Pushing that aside, what I like about Ryan Johnson as a writer is he's not afraid to say exactly what's on his mind, poke at politics, poke at trends, social media bullshit, and go all in with the thoughts. Now, you might not be in agreement with him. Some I know will be annoyed at uh, some of the characteristic tropes he plays off of. I myself had a good time. I was really intrigued by the murder mystery aspect. And the thing he does so great, and I hate this term, but it works really well in these types of films, is the subverting of expectations. He takes traditional approaches, but then he flips them on their head. And that's done time and time again in Glass Onion. You're expecting things to play out this way, and bam, Ryan Johnson hits you with a twist. Oh, you think you're on the verge of solving this thing? Boom, he hits you with something else. He does go way zanier with things. Knives Out felt grounded. Sure, everything was a little over the top, a little larger than life as far as the personalities. Here, it's borderline Looney Tunes at times, not only because of the characters, but also some of the plot points get a little bit out there. These aren't even criticisms. They actually made the movie more enjoyable. The one negative I will say is the film is too long. It's a gripe I have like all the time now. Movies are overstaying their welcome. And I think the reason is Ryan Johnson goes out of his way to explain every single little detail. It's okay to have some stuff left up to the imagination or for audiences to fill in some of the blanks. Like how did so-and-so come to this conclusion? Oh, well, well, I remember where he was at during this. No, Ryan Johnson shows you everything. And I appreciate show, don't tell, but man, he, I mean, he shows and tells to an obnoxious degree at times. Like, I get it. You figured this all out in your head, Ryan. Good job. You have a tight script here. Let's move on a little sooner. The film is about two hours and 20 minutes. You shave off 20 minutes. This is an easy rewatch. As it stands, I felt this is a one and done situation. I'm happy I watched it. I highly recommend it. It's up there with Knives Out. I wouldn't say it's better or worse. They're about equal definitely have different feels to him, which I also appreciate. I hope he continues this trend of making more novels in this universe. And he keeps going in different directions, making Blanc that one figure that stays consistent. I recently watched the first two seasons of White Lotus on Netflix because I heard it's amazing. Um, I thought they were both watchable but highly overrated shows. 
if they had more of a Ryan Johnson feel where the characters were more exciting and intriguing to watch, then White Lotus would be up there. But as it stands, most of them are kind of boring. It takes way too long to get anywhere. So yeah, I absolutely appreciate and prefer the Knives Out style. Let me know if you watch Glass Onion in the comments below. Like the video if you had a good time. I post tons of movie reviews and commentary each and every week on the channel. I would love to have you stick around. Take care. Since you're still here, maybe you can help me solve another mystery. And that is the mystery of why you are not supporting this channel on Patreon. At patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier for crying out loud, and you get access to 300 plus exclusive videos in the archive from my secret second channel. It's, it's a remarkable deal. There is, of course, higher tiers, and you can become a YouTube Join member as well, so you don't have to do Patreon. There is another real second channel called Adam After Dark that I just launched a week ago. It needs some love over there as well, so please think about subscribing. It's a skit-based, light-hearted fun affair. There's only two to four minute videos on there. And uh, yeah, we need to grow that thing. And by we, I mean I do because I'm a one-man operation, but I look at everyone here as a family. So come join me over there, fam.